Yeah, I'm having storage problems, so that completely cut out. Um, gonna go back just in case you just don't watch the other video and just watch this one. Um, so all humans alive have parents, right? Like someone, you came out of somebody's vagina and that's just the way it is. You can have your feelings about gender pronouns and shit, but like everyone has a mother. So there's this idea that like, some people's parents don't care about them and therefore like you don't have to care about them either um that is false logic <laughs> and it's unfortunate that a lot of people kind of raise their children that way like they'll be like i'm gonna take care of mine you take care of yours you know what i'm saying and, and they do it in a way where like they literally watch their neighbor fail and and die right and, and really make mistakes and all these things because that's the thing, like in the free world, we're talking about in America and the UK and Europe, the developed world, you can just build something for yourself. Like quite literally, you can just be like, I'm just gonna build this thing. And then you can just go do it. It doesn't matter really what your parents said, if your parents helped you, if they didn't, if they liked you, if they didn't like you. Just, no, the, your parents' stories don't matter. And I think um, so many people are trying to live off of like their parents' whatever. Like my mom did this, my grandma did that, this person said this, oh, so all these stories. And they're so busy living in the story of the past that they completely failed to miss the reality. And the right now is really fucking important. This is why I tried very hard for at least the last year and a half to communicate with you guys via Instagram because I knew that people were not ready for this story. This is a hard story. This is a story about urban decay. Uh, this is a story about cross-cultural communication. This is a story about politics and fucking power. This is a story about art and ownership. This is a story about beauty and the lack thereof. This is a story about racism and prevailing nonetheless. My story has not changed. Personally, I'm willing to die for what I believe in. You do what the fuck you want to do. You can go watch my other video where I was practicing on campus with a knife. The crackhead comes to see me. He can suck knife. Just like this. That's what I would do. You know what? Teach his own. Like, I, you know, if, you're, if you feel like your life is in danger, Protect your life. Fuck the story about your grandmother and everybody else. Protect your own life. Because as y'all seen, the killers are out here. They'll shoot up babies in school. They'll take out anybody. Like, how many mass shootings have been? Like, 17? There's going to be one every day. Like, this is not... Some of us are almost immune to violence. I mean, I don't know how some of y'all have been like watching what's happened. Like, if you're in the Bay Area, you know about the violence happening in Oakland. Like, it's you can't even pretend like you don't know. You for sure know. If you're in San Francisco, you for sure know about like the violence and the homelessness and the the just the lawlessness. Like, it, there's no secret. It's every fucking day. Okay, so most of y'all don't give a shit, and um, I personally am not trying to convince you to give a shit like I'm I'm not I'm not here to like um march or I, I don't do protests I'm not really into that I'm more into act now and then you know let's talk about it later and dissect what happened after it was done but I'm definitely not the like let's talk about it let's all powwow like fuck all that like most people care about themselves and I think some of you just care so little about yourself that like you just been watching shit happening like if you're so let's say that like if you're black um and honestly you haven't been a advocating for yourself in white spaces because like most of the society is white like 68 percent or something so like you're going to have to talk and interact with white people that's just like a thing you, you can't actually function in society where you're like oh i'm just i'm only going to exist in this like segregated neighborhood and i'm just never like you can't do that right so you need to like communicate for yourself, but when you, you can't just like watch the mistreatment of black people and black bodies and black women, and then just think like, nah, fuck that bitch, but I'm okay. Like, that's not really how it works. Like racism is a system. And so if you're on the black team, you're just on the black team. 
Uh, if you're on the white team, you're on the white team. That's how races work, okay? Um, you can feel your feelings about it. You can be like, oh, I don't want to. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I blah, 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 blah. But I speak blah, 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 and I went to college. It, it doesn't matter. Like, I know you have your story, but unfortunately, racism is a thing here. And you fall on a team like everybody else. And uh, you have to exist within that. And you can feel your feelings about it. Like, you can be upset. I've been upset. I've been talking about the feelings real with you guys. Talk therapy is real. Take talk therapy seriously. Journal about your real fucking feelings. I think the reason some of you guys actually don't see change is because you're actually neglecting the change that you could be doing at home. Like, you could be having meaningful interactions like real interactions with like your neighbors the people in your community via like attorneys and law like so you could be interacting with systems and kind of like letting them know here's what equitable treatment looks like to me but instead a lot of y'all are complaining to the wrong people you're taking problems to your family members who have no solutions like you can't actually bring a problem to a person who is unable to problem solve because you're i mean you're just whining to a fucking gutter they don't have a solution for you. There are definitely, there are always solutions to your problem though, whatever your problem is. Like if you really hate someone that much, you could honestly just hire a hitman to take them out. You can, everyone can feel their feelings about it. Maybe you'll get caught, maybe you won't. I don't know, but that's a real thing, right? Like you, if you really like, um, if you really, you know, feel like, oh, I'm so upset at this person, you could just go talk to them about it and be like, Yo, like this thing that you did, it just really made me upset. Maybe they didn't, sometimes like you are upset about something and you feel like another person is doing something intentionally and they actually might not be. Sometimes they might not know. Other times they know and they just don't give a shit. That's a different thing. Like that's kind of a heartless sort of situation where you're like, yeah, this person did this really fucked up thing. And like they knew they did it. Like, and that's happened to me quite a lot of times. Like I've had to just deal with the fact like racism is very real and like, I'm on the receiving end of the racism. So for me, I'm not just gonna like take the racism and be like silent about it and be like, oh, the racism, oh well. Maybe in a hundred years after an MLK march, yeah, fuck all that, no. Like, no. I'm gonna go figure out how to change it and then go change it. Everybody else can march and shit and they can be like, mm, let's quietly talk about it and write it. Like, fuck all that, no. Get to the solution. There's always a fucking solution, always. Now, I just, I'm sorry, it's like laughable that the NFL or NBA players have the gun violence shirts. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, wealthy people just think they can be like, oh, we're safe, we're safe, we're immune. Like, that's not really how it works. That's actually why you see really conservative politicians that are talking about these social issues, because, like, it has gone way out of hand. This is not a civil society. There is no law in order right now. There are me if you guys didn't hear this, there was a story like, um, it had to be like two weeks ago, a literal police officer, she broke this like white trash criminal out of prison. So he was like, he was on death row or something. She drove him out of the prison. So she was about to retire in like a day. She drives the criminal out of the prison. And then they're like, oh my God, this guy is like literally, he, he had murdered like 20 people or something. So she drives him out and they were basically trying to do like a, a Thelma and Luis like runaway thing. <laughs> That was like, that was that long ago. That was like a month ago. Uh, yeah, and they got really far. Um, I don't actually know if they caught them yet, but like, that was a police officer. They just, she, she literally just broke him out and they were trying to like drive away. So, <laughs> it, I mean, you know, like, and obviously you saw, you saw the kid with the manifesto. I didn't, I'm not keeping up. I'm not like the mass shooting follower, but I will say like racism and violence is very real then you don't, you don't just get away from it because you're in California. California is not a liberal state. There are like nine active white supremacist groups here. They're active white supremacist groups. Some of us actually read the ACLU map that follows white supremacist groups. You might want to know where your killer's going to be, right? Like if you have any fucking sense at all, like... So they didn't, they didn't like go quietly. They didn't just be like, oh, I've given up my white supremacy card. No, they're active white supremacist groups. They support places like Planned Parenthood, which stop the growth of black babies in, Cal in California. That's a thing. I've talked about this before. Everybody thought it was a joke when Kanye West talked about it, but that, that wasn't a joke. Everyone called him mentally crazy. 
That's a fact. Like the woman who created Planned Parenthood, the reason that she made it was to decrease the number of um, black babies born in the United States. That was the whole purpose of the organization. Now, it's done a lot of positive things since then, um, but I think that that's important for black women to know because it doesn't make sense to actually birth a trauma baby. Like, you know, like if you aren't, like I talked about this the other day, but like there's quite a lot going on in communities of color and it, it really impoverished communities, communities in general. There's like incest, there's rape, there's alcoholism, there's drug abuse, th a lot of mental health issues. Uh, it's, there's so many things happening and uh, like no one really seems to care to like actually support youth who are coming out of those communities because like they are literally going to become adults and a part of the society. And they too have to like live here. And I've seen that for a while and I've tried to like, one, be really empathetic to it and kind of like understand, which is why I spent that time studying poverty. Like it was, those issues are actually very interesting to me, um, especially just because there's so many people, so, so many, um, really like brown and black children all over the world who are, going through this um and there are not people talking about it and there is a need for people to talk about it um silencing trauma is not useful at all it just perpetuates the the sickness and you you gotta like there's just no reason to live like that you know, if you sometimes life is unlivable, which is why like suicide is a thing, right? Like if you get to a place in your life where things have just spiraled so far out of control that like, you know, you, you have no hope, sometimes it's just better to die. Like not even in a joking way. Like some of these children should, you know, th death would probably be better. Just imagine going home every single day and being raped as like a child. Like the first time I heard that story, I didn't believe it was true. It was like, there's no way. And then I just, I, it's, it, it's some things you can't unknow. You can't unknow. And I think some people are so far removed from the reality of quite a lot of people um, in this country that they just, they don't understand. And I think that's a really hard piece of immigration that some people are missing. Like people are running from real violence and lawlessness. And there's this, the lawlessness a lot of times is extremely racialized. Like the worst of the worst things are happening to blacker people. Like the darker the person gets, the coarser the hair, the more African the features, like the worse the treatment is. It's kind of like that everywhere all around the world. And in America, we have done so much work around civil rights because racism is structural and systemic here. And a lot of people don't understand like what that means and how far we've come. And I think quite a lot of people are not ready for actual equality. Like equality is very scary because um, anti-blackness was the, I mean, it was the culture, it's the joke, it's the, the bread and butter, the whole country. Because like, so Kenya was, uh, she talks about this today in, in, her, in her video, um, which I man, if you guys are not subscribed to her channel, again, highly recommend you go subscribe. So she was, um, so Kenya spent quite a while um, well, maybe not a lot, I think it was only two years in law school, but um, as a person who's friends with quite a lot of attorneys, um, it, there's a certain way of like thinking, right, about civil society um, and as, a, as an attorney um, and understanding just like the way that the laws work in this, in this country. I do think that unfortunately, like we need a lot more civil rights attorneys, but we don't have them because so many things are like, they're just affecting groups. It's like, it's, a, it's like there's one problem in a community 
and like it just never gets solved and then there's like all of these you know sp spiraling effects right that come from like that one problem never getting solved and um there's just some parts of trauma where sometimes like the trauma is so deep and you just never get this opportunity to heal from it and so you might just start to like really really spiral that's not safe and i think that that's why you know if I'm, if america is going to really continue like people are going to have to get over their feelings about crt and really start to have some serious conversations about racism and race and the history of the country like basically like white history um because if if we don't um we're just ne like we can't ever move forward and like that is hard um and we also have to have more like systems for like like the public health systems have to be strengthened like the anti-poverty programs have to actually be equitable and they have to like really work for people like we have to actually care about homelessness and like jobs and people being able to like support themselves. Like that has to be like a thing. Everyone does not have to live in big cities. That's not necessarily like you don't, that's not really necessary. Unfortunately, like I grew up in the city. I really wish I didn't though, because then maybe I wouldn't have so much of a sort of like tarnished view of, you know, active systemic hate. I've noticed a lot of people that I know who grew up in the country, they have much more of a like simple view of the world. I wish I had a simple view of the world. Unfortunately, I do not have a simple view of the world. Um, the point of this though, was that you should probably stop listening to your parents and <laughs> And honest, and not stop listening to them, like, be like, shut the fuck up, you stupid retard. But more like, uh, just acknowledge that, like, their worldview is old school. And it's kind of like your responsibility to teach them, right? So, so up until 18, they were teaching you. But I feel like a lot more people, they do actually need to go away, away to college in order to, like, learn, A, about themselves, and then B, about the world, um and they need to like they need to have experiences that are um how you say yeah they they seem to have experiences that are outside of their own community sort of system and that's a it's just a really strange thing to say but it's i'm serious I think this is another reason why so many systems are failing. It's because a lot of people went to bad universities. Going to a state school sometimes doesn't really do much for you if you don't actually learn how to critically think about the world in which you live. That's why schools like Berkeley or schools like Harvard or schools like you know Amherst or Yale, Princeton or something, those schools have like, re they have a serious, serious like, amount of money and resources to pour into education and the ability to critically think. So you have like serious critical thinkers in those spaces who are able to like analyze the society in which we live and really try to think about solutions. And it's not just from one racial group's perspective, it's like understanding the economy we have now and the economy we'd like to see in the future not just today, but like <laughs> extending out like years and decades and centuries. Um, those things are kind of important. And I think like you as a citizen, if you don't understand any of the shit that I'm saying, go take a class at community college on like economics or sociology, right? Like those are courses all adults need to take. You know, it's, I don't, I don't know how some of you are like functioning out here when you just, it's just like you don't know shit about anything and it's just, it's kind of pathetic. Like we, we gotta do better.